Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another Q&A session. I do apologize, it's been a month since I've asked the questions though, a lot of has been going on. Today we are at the salt mine hobby shop, still kind of under construction, but it's coming along nicely with the McConaughey workbench. I'm going to work through a lot of our questions. Uh, did put up a bit of an apology for the uh, extended period of time off as well as uh, not uploading and creating content for quite a while. There was an immense amount of work uh, relocating house, transferring, decommissioning the studio and it's still uh, ongoing. I haven't quite finished uh, the whole pandemic uh, being able to to uh, transfer equipment from property to property and being under a total uh, statewide lockdown has uh, caused a lot of uh, complications and issues but we're doing our best to uh, work through and getting up back to scratch to creating content. What I have been doing uh, for a while is going back to my second old YouTube channel, The PhD Manchild, and practicing creating content on that, more humorous, comedic, uh, slice of life stuff. So if you're looking for something to consume and check out, uh, have a look at that. Some of it may be a bit uh, vulgar and uh, not to your taste or a, a different uh, alternation of uh, hobbies, or it might be right up your uh, alley. Plus, we are on uh, Twitter. A lot of uh, content is being uh, put up there, shared, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Facebook included on the uh, Facebook page. It's the ideal way to uh, communicate or contact me as I can't find the uh, inbox and certain comment channels on uh, YouTube that is uh, slowly uh, being chipped away. All of that out of uh, the way. Let's get straight into the questions. First, we have Benzo. I've uh, built a few Evangelion resin kits, but never watched the series or read the manga. Is there a right way to get into the series? Looks like quite a lot out there with the TV series, the films, the DVDs, etc. And it seems like most people didn't like the ending anyway. Any advice on where to start or just stick to the mock kits? Uh, when I was younger, I was a big fan of uh, Evangelion uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s and got my hands on the original dub DVD series. Uh, interestingly enough, it's sort of like a multiverse uh, theory that after a certain um, event, different branches uh, branch out and the story is a choose your own ending sort of uh, affair. It's uh, very controversial in uh, how people interpret the series. It's uh, not a very linear storyline. Uh, here's a, a few charts on <laughs> how the series breaks up and the direction it goes in mediums and uh, endings and uh, whatnot. It does get a bit complicated. What you can do is watch uh, the series of movies, which isn't quite uh, complete yet. Yeah, the Evangelion 1.01, 1.02, and I believe there is a parallel manga that I'm not too familiar with. It's up to date, great graphics, updated uh, story. It's pretty fun to watch. I'm not quite up to date. I haven't uh, got my hands on the last couple of uh, movies and check that out. But what I was a big fan of and grew up with was the original. 90s uh, series, not to be confused with the Netflix release where they've uh, updated the story and the dub to the same animation. If you're able to uh, pirate it or buy the original uh, box set in the English dub, very, very worthwhile uh, watching. I think it's what everyone got uh, used to as uh, the core concept, episode 1 to episode 26. You could stop there, but then they made a few movies to attach to the end if you choose to consider that as the ending, which is uh, very controversial, but it's also pretty uh, well done. Uh, there's a TV, not TV, a YouTube video uh, covering all the timelines and ending of uh, Evangelion. I'll put the link down below. It'll do a much better job of uh, explaining how it goes and just the whole 
concept of the Evangelion uh, universe. Uh, a manga goes in one direction, a drama goes in one direction, multiple stories spread out, the pachinko machine has a story, the video games, old and new, have a completely different story. It's uh, very fascinating and uh, gives enough ammunition for fans to argue and bicker and uh, put their own interpretation out forever. But there's no real way of uh, consuming and enjoying uh, the series. I haven't watched it in a very long time, but my brother uh, caught up with the Netflix version and it uh, upset him quite a bit in uh, the change of voices and uh, the cutting back on the edginess. Probably got a little too much into that. Max Brandit. Are you living in a parking garage now? Uh, the echo is intense. Hang up some large rugs to help dampen the reverb. Always nice to see people get an upgrade to their workbench. That was at a stage when I was still modifying. I had a big roller door, glass doors brick everywhere the audio did echo and it was a bit of an experiment and this video is also an experiment so i'm not too sure how it's uh, gonna work but when i did a little audio engineering way back as a job you get a different sound when you're blasting um, audio out into a wooden empty hall and then when that was full of uh, people all those meat bags that is the audience would soak up so much sound and create a different reverb effect and what i'm counting is when I put all these glass cabinets, figures, computers, tools, benches, a whole wall of uh, model kits, that will absorb everything and it wouldn't reverb as much. If anything, the last studio I was in was nothing but uh, glass and aluminium and that didn't sound too bad unless it was very windy or rainy. One of the biggest disadvantages is outside is a major road, so there's going to be uh, some background noises of uh, passing cars and ambulances, but again, I'm not going to know until I finish this video and see how that goes. Inside the property behind me is uh, a very uh, heavy set, old fashioned house, and uh, sound is just completely dead. I've uh, recorded a few videos in there, and it sounds absolutely uh, great. There's no background being picked up from my brother living there or the next door neighbor from the duplex. I love it. So sometimes I'll film in here, but most post audio recordings and major videos is gonna happen inside there. And you'll have a look at what the recording area and the computer area is gonna look, at, look like in future pictures and video uploads. But uh, yeah, thank you for the concern, thank you for the recommendation, but I think a giant wall of model kits and toys is so much cooler than a big rug. But for the roller door, for some reason, I've got some camo netting on a production I worked on and might drag that up when the garage door is closed. Toko, you look like you're freezing your pauldrons off in that garage, comrade. Uh, it's not very cold in here, uh, that's the uh, furry shunker. Keeps the head warm, a nice coat, and I'm happy to go hard. Again, the previous uh, studio was annexed from the house. Concrete slab, aluminium wall, thin glass. Uh, winter's got very cold, but if you wear the right clothes, you can just work through it, and the coldness does keep you awake and aware to work on our uh, projects for a lot longer. So this space is very similar. Then the pictures you're going to be uh, looking at when I've uh, visited uh, the border of North China and uh, Korea, that was uh, minus 20 degrees or even colder than that. Uh, very fun uh, holiday I had in 2013. You'll love the tanks and bigs and the big statue of uh, Mao. Uh, the Weathering Pig. Uh, by the way, check out his link down below. He's got a very interesting channel covering uh, Warhammer and uh, Gundam. Uh, we go backwards and forwards. What are some of the effects you enjoy using for weathering? I only really played around with Tamir Weathering Master Kits and uh, Rust Pigment. Weathering is such a massive, clever and uh, huge expanse of products and methods and uh, styles you shouldn't really only use one but multiple methods very subtly to build up to create a master effect if it's lightly weathered or heavy weather heavy weathering doesn't mean that there's multiple methods laid up 
it just means that the effect is very heavy. You can have light weathering and there could be four or five methods done very lightly and very subtly. The problem with uh, pigments in the weathering master is once you apply it looks good but with a top coat or any further effects it fades so you might overdo it and it might not fade enough. It's kind of hard to control but it's still a good method. My personal favourite is uh, washes and inks. Uh, when you apply that uh, on, it just stays as is, you're laid to dry, you put top coat, you can accent it with uh, dust and pigments, you can wetten the pigments and mix it with a thinner, thus becoming a uh, wash and apply it. Uh, washes come in a sludge where you cover the whole thing for a build up, a pin wash only for into uh, panel lines and recessed details, or on strategic areas such as a build up of uh, mud. Uh, gradient or heavy or snow or dirt or soot. You strategically put it up by looking at uh, reference material but every model you do and other people's models you look at you build up that experience and wealth and you get a little bit better at it. Uh, there's many other products uh, such as weathering uh, pencils and weathering pens, uh, pastes, liquids, paintables, all sorts of stuff and looking at that individual tutorial and product and experimenting and see what works what doesn't is ideal buy almost everything on the market try it once stick to what you really like but when looking at tutorials there's also recommendations of non modeling branded goods which sometimes gets frowned upon but in the old days was very popular such as hairspray for uh, chipping opposed to chipping fluid using makeup products instead of uh, weathering pigments. Some makeup products for certain uh, styles of uh, blush or skin tones can look like uh, muds and dirts, not to disparage from those uh, skin tones or ethnicities. When it's removed from a humative figure person, it has a pigment uh, of its own such as an artistic paint. Uh, lastly, one of the most powerful weathering things you can do is when you paint it up, you paint up a model deciding if it's going to be clean or if it's going to be dirty. It's not so much that you make a model, make a mistake and go, oh shit, I need to fix that through heavy weathering and hiding that part. You decide that from the very start and a lot of your weathering can be done from the painting stage or even the building and texturing stage and layering on top of that, fine gradients from an airbrush, dry brushing and gradients from um, hand brush, all that sort of thing. It's uh, all designed and layered on uh, top of each other and it's something that you develop yourself. You get a bit artistic or you're trying to copy something perfect and you develop over time. Just try on a bunch of uh, sample of cheap models as well as uh, every model you do something different until you figure out something you really, really like. Song asks, uh, hope you are free of COVID-19. Now, I'm located in Australia, in the state of Victoria, the city of Melbourne. Unfortunately, we're under full uh, lockdown and it's the first time in the history of the state and I've been alive where our whole state and city has been isolated from the rest of the country. We don't have uh, the freedom of our movement for quite a while. And uh, during the first uh, wave, we had the virus, it was clamped down, things were doing well. I was still going to work and my uh, job description got redeployed where I was working uh, behind the front line in uh, dealing with COVID. It was a bit just dangerous, very stressful, but I was able to cope with it. Some personal things got me to step out of work and I got uh, stood down from my job. They're still interested in uh, re-employing me uh, once this is uh, all over, but at the moment I'm full-time at home with uh, government assistance uh, via my job to say that I'm employed but not working for pay. So this leaves me in a very comfortable situation to care for my family, care for myself, redevelop myself, but at an opportune time where I'm moving a property, I'm building up this uh, workshop, I'm changing my content, changing my life, and meeting a lot of personal affairs, family affairs, all that sort of thing. Getting my ducks in a row before I move on to the next stage of my life, my business, my career. So that's why everything's come to a halting stop. 
to uh, relook at my videos, relook at my business, relook at my uh, job. If I'm going to scale that back to part time, quit, stay full time while running the shop, developing my own uh, model kits, and continually to run the channel. So I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, COVID's given me the uh, opportunity to uh, stop, have a rest, and uh, figure everything out. But the most important thing, me and my family, we're healthy, we're social distance, we've stayed away from uh, everyone, and no one's gotten sick. And at this stage, as uh, things is uh, under very heavy scrutiny and control, I'm very unlikely to get sick and stay healthy throughout the whole time. I hope everyone in my viewer base and friendship list is also safe and healthy and doing well with themselves, uh, their family, as well as their mental health. Uh, a lot of people don't do well when they're uh, locked down and away from work, but it's always a good opportunity to look into yourself, reinvest in yourself, learn a skill, and uh, try to move forward in uh, something because once this is all over and the economy and industry returns to normal, uh, the people who hit the ground running in their uh, career or whatever is uh, going to excel where people have sort of been stagnant in uh, health and uh, mental activity, uh, physical work activity is going to take a while to warm up and uh, get back to work or even employed. So have a look at your resume, your skill set, and consider doing an online course or something. If you're home with kids, they're your first priority, and I feel very bad for you. It's hard to uh, look after uh, kids who don't quite understand what's going out in the uh, outside world and uh, putting all of your uh, attention in that. Uh, instead of investment in yourself, it's an investment in their future, same thing. Maybe get them to learn a new skill, preoccupied with uh, something, creative uh, activities, endeavor, enjoying language, writing, uh, whatever. Uh, just uh, keep your hands on uh, something and at least create the illusion that you're moving forward somehow for your state of mind. Uh, I hope that helps in uh, some way. Had to plug in my uh, camera and forgot to wear the uh, salt mines uniform. Plastic Oddities, our good friends, a channel worth uh, checking out uh, down below. Uh, congratulations Tristan for reaching a thousand subscribers. That is a massive uh, milestone. You're doing very well. Please keep uploading and creating uh, content. He left a comment uh, regarding the God Hand sending sponge cubes not that important. I just wanted to bring him in the video uh, somehow. He's uh, gotten into 3D printing and he's just excelled and started making some models very quickly, very well, uh, sculpting 3D figures. I think he's going to be getting into some pretty cool stuff if I can convince him to post videos about that. Uh, it's going to be very entertaining and amusing and uh, educational. So keep an eye on him. He's going places and really exploding. Uh, myself, with the uh, COVID uh, chat, I've invested in a very large uh, Ender 5 Pro Creality 3D printer. We'll be getting back to uh, filament printing, which we'll get that to another part of uh, the video. So good stuff. John Jones, uh, funnily enough, getting onto that, uh, has given me cr uh, constructive criticism as a 3D printer himself that a lot of the faults and issues I've been having with my Spark Maker is, is with that a very old, uh, faulty bit of technology that was at the bottom of the market. And things have improved to the point where, for a similar cost, I could upgrade to an Elgu Mars or a, uh, any cubic 3D printer. So I cannot endorse or recommend using uh, the Spark Maker as much anymore as those are very similar in maintenance, supplies, working them, I'm printing them. But if you're willing to put in the effort, Spark Maker will still do. What's not outlined in a lot of my Spark Maker videos was at the time I was doing a lot of commission prints for the salt mines, making war games for figures and prototypes and all that. And the resin printing goes with all of those was flawless, beautiful. Hundreds of prints without any issues uh, whatsoever besides one or two. When I got around to do my own personal prints, that's when things went wrong. Instead of uh, throwing them out and completely disregarding them for the perfect prints, 
I put my scale modeling skills uh, into uh, finishing it up and polishing it a little further and having a better understanding of that uh, 3D printer and technology. I spent a lot of time fault finding and digging and pulling apart that printer and studying it. But in the end, it uh, wasn't for naught. I learned a lot about the technology and I know how to uh, go further with a newer printer. Uh, once the funds is available to invest uh, into that, as well as sharing that knowledge with the greater community for those who still choose to struggle with a 3D printer of uh, the Spark Maker Make or uh, anything else. Uh, my printer uh, imaged here somewhere. It's very sad, but uh, I put uh, a covering on it to uh, increase insulation and in, uh, heat so drafts do not uh, bother it. I'm thinking of upgrading it by putting uh, some sort of wool or foam around it to keep it uh, hot and uh, heated by its own internal uh, motors and whatnot. And uh, some of the wire sticking out is just because I can't be bothered pulling it back. Uh, together properly as it's easy to uh, split open and uh, do maintenance so it's not too bad and uh, some pictures of my uh, awesome prints funnily enough spark maker has made uh, contact with me via multiple departments and uh, managers initially uh, marketing who <laughs> openly insulted me and said that their product was uh, perfect and I was doing everything wrong and unskilled and uh, without watching the video just following very unhealthy tips to someone eventually sending me a message and convincing me to take on their new printer, um, first trying to sell it to me, then giving it me to, for free to market their uh, full high D uh, printer, and then deciding uh, not to sponsor me afterwards as they would uh, much prefer uh, an American and uh, not even sponsoring them. So with uh, all of uh, that support, the community around it on Facebook and other social media are helpful and uh, they'll help you. Uh, though the uh, common trend is once you burn out your printer move on to uh, another brand uh, eventually they're probably not going to make uh, sales and continually making parts uh, forever unless a new model comes out everyone has their eyes on either Elgumars or any cubic uh, next uh, Denvas uh, now, he was going on my injection moulding project and uh, that is something that I still intend to go with, especially with the experiments with uh, different moulds. And uh, what he came um, up as a proposal, which I'm taking uh, very seriously, is in the old uh, Soviet Union for small injection mould blocks. They would mix epoxy resin with uh, metallic shavings such as aluminium or uh, steel. And the steel in the resin will absorb the heat and uh, the resin will be less likely to warp, thus uh, getting far more prints before it's uh, not a viable uh, mould anymore. I've done some further research in mixing pigment and uh, powders uh, in mould making process and is a step that I will take and very likely will uh, make uh, communication with him. As everything is still crazy, uh, the injection moulding project has been put on hold for now, but eventually it will be transported here. I'm going to do some CAD work, make some moulds, and we'll have something pressed out eventually with uh, full documentation. But I'd like to restart making content on the channel before I get into stuff that's too uh, ambitious. A lot's happening at the moment and it's a bit overwhelming so I'm going to target one thing at a time until everything is uh, complete and I eventually get more time to just uh, work uh, through the uh, issues of things and then uh, sharing it with the uh, greater community but uh, the people from the injection molding and the benchtop injection molding community lovely gentlemen very supportive a lot of people having trouble a lot of people making breakthroughs everyone is sharing information and I'm going to step up to the plates and help and join them and release some very cool uh, styrene injection molded uh, models uh, about half the community has uh, the same thing in mind and uh, instead of competing and sabotaging everyone's helping everyone and we're all going to probably be hitting uh, different uh, products in the market just for fun and sharing or profit so very very fun times and an exciting uh, project so uh, thank you uh, very much other uh, suggestions include using um, 
uh, weld epoxy or metal based epoxy or uh, cold weld epoxy products. Uh, some have had success with that, I've seen in that evidence and uh, will also attempt that. Now Tulskill uh, came across one of my videos of criticism that the information wasn't quite right. Uh, we got in a very interesting uh, discussion that uh, my video made a few years ago on the guide hand nippers and premium nippers is uh, obsolete in the way of talking about the products of uh, what's available and what's not on the market though the information was uh, still uh, viable of how they're used, how they're perceived, how they're uh, marketed. Uh, I never thought that the fine single bladed uh, nippers or the god hand nippers are necessarily suitable for gunpla but more of a luxury item and is excellent for shipbuilding and fine um, armour modelling or military modelling. So the information is still relevant, but uh, when you're doing research on uh, archives, articles, magazines, videos, whatnot, most information is very good, but always have a look at the date and consider that there's some new information uh, out there, and that's why you collect a whole plethora of information and build it up to uh, be invested in your own mindset. Uh, now this uh, gentleman, called Sam has a few questions regarding uh, painting and whatnot which I think is very worthwhile to share. How do I prevent dust uh, sticking? Uh, at least minimalize to lower the chance of uh, dust sticking to model. If uh, the paint is low drying you're in a fairly uh, dusty environment where you're modeling. I remember a gentleman who I was invited into his studio would have all of these uh, cake tins all over the places. You'll paint a part, put it in there immediately and let it to dry and uh, cure it, such as in the picture. For a much larger model, he actually built a tent out of uh, clear plastic in uh, the middle of one of his uh, workbenches, uh, anchored the bottoms with uh, weights of uh, each edge of this uh, large clear tarp and then suspended the center of it from the ceiling with uh, hooks creating a giant circus tent where he would have his galvanized cardboard and all the skewers. And that also didn't allow any uh, dust to settle on the parts. Uh, that's the two best ways to do it for small models or big models. It does take up a lot of space but generally once you're painted and you can settle the part down without uh, being damaged in any way, putting it in a box, a clear box, a cake tin, a bread tin, will uh, work every time. Question two, will shining a strong lighting, tungsten filament bulb, at freshly sprayed items help it uh, dry faster and reduce dust sticking? Now, how light globes work is that energy passes the filament, it gives off light. Uh, with that old technology, the unfortunate uh, part of that is a lot of energy and wattage is uh, wasted via uh, the heat seeking out as a byproduct. If the room is cold, it kind of heats it up a bit being sort of like a heat lamp. If it's a hot warm day in summer, <laughs> very, very useless and you're counteracting things. So what that lamp is doing is it's expelling heat and it's making uh, the thinner evaporate up faster for your um, lacquers, acrylics, uh, your enamels. So it's drying it out and it's going from a wet state to a putty state. So you've dried the part but you haven't cured the part. That's when it's from a putty state to being very hard and that's the longer state. Dust will still set on it so you can heat it to dry it a lot quicker but it's not going to solve your dust problem. It will dry it click quicker, but don't handle it. Still put it away, let it sit for how long that's uh, recommended for drying and curing, and even a little longer from uh, my personal recommendation. But if you're going to use a heat source, instead of a light globe that's very wasteful in part light, part heat, just use a heat source. A heat gun, dehydrator, a hair dryer, or just put it in a room where a heater is on such as uh, winter or something instead of a, a cold damp room. So it's whatever room that you happen to have uh, heating or a room that might have a radiator or some sort of machinery going on that has a warmish, dryish uh, atmosphere. Uh, three, should I keep an airbrush just for spraying clear coats? 
so that uh, residue to prevent dried paint will create uh, the debris. I always recommend owning two or three uh, airbrushes. Uh, some people have a few airbrushes, one for acrylic, one for enamel, one for lacquer, and only those thinners run through. Some people have an uh, airbrush that's really fine for painting and shading and all that fancy stuff, and a very cheap, nasty, uh, Chinese manufactured airbrush only for clear coats and only for uh, primers. And if you're going in that direction, I would recommend installing a 0.5 mil needle and nozzle for an airbrush only for primer, only for clear coat, because it's not going to clog as much, it's uh, not going to orange peel as much, and you can spray like crazy, and then you have something that's a 0.3 or 0.2 for all your detailing and painting work, and you might even consider buying a nicer airbrush like a Herner um, Sternbeck or a water or uh, whatever uh, does your thing and just do some really nice uh, fine work. I have about five, six, seven airbrushes, some just for base coating, some just for uh, detailing work, but I generally use the Hyacinth cheap airbrushes for 90% of my work as when parts wear out, they're cheap to replace and that I have access to multiple sizes of needles and nozzles for the right job. Last, any problems with enamel clear onto acrylic water base? Now, here's uh, the chart uh, that uh, everyone has seen before. If you're using the water base, let's say uh, polyurethanes, uh, Vallejo and all that, it's always highly recommended not to put a solvent over that because what is only thinnable and soluble by water will have issues being attacked by a solvent on top. If we're talking about alcohol acrylics, uh, Gunz, the art stuff, Tamiya, has chemical resistance when it dries and hardens. So yes, you can put uh, a clear uh, enamel clear coat, especially if it's the same brand, enamel acrylic with enamel, enamel on top. Uh, generally, to beginners with this chart, it's uh, definitely not recommended but uh, my teachings say put the acrylic on let it dry let it harden to its fullest and then when you put that enamel on top do it in very thin coats so there's not too much thinner sitting on the surface that's less likely to eat into it if you put in a super thick coat or just dunk that part into uh, pure paint that solvent is so strong yes it's going to eat into the acrylic but if you put a marginal amount and build it up in layers, allowing it uh, to dry and giving it the best protection coat, it's going to give you the advantages of uh, being an enamel and it's not going to attack the acrylic long state or uh, quickly. Uh, Louis and uh, Spanish gentleman found a video on my channel from about 10, 11 years ago from my first Japan trip where I took a, a quick one minute still um, in Akihabara of a young up and coming idol band dancing and singing and he thinks the girls from that band is uh, very cute. I sometimes forgot at the early state of my channel I wasn't sure what direction and where I wanted to go and when I had my first trip to Japan and I was culturally shocked of uh, what the community is like and culture in Akihabara city and the whole uh, otaku thing from a Japanese stance and other parts of Japan I documented everything I could to uh, share it with my friends uh, at the time it's a video I never removed because I forgot about it but uh, it's interesting that uh, old stuff like that that's considered uh, historical content now is uh, still uh, discovered and enjoyed by uh, all different people for <laughs> all different reasons. Another interesting thing I like to show is I know sometimes it's taboo for a foreigner to come onto an English uh, speaking forum and post in their own native language upsetting a lot of uh, conservative English uh, speakers. On my uh, content I encourage everyone to come. If you leave a foreign question on my channel uh, anyone who leaves a question I'll always give the best ability I can to answer it and uh, the least I'll do is a Google Translate, uh, figure out what you're trying to inquire and uh, give an answer back also uh, translated in their uh, language. So it uh, doesn't matter where you are, 
I'm always there for you and I'm also happy for all of my uh, foreign friends to be there for me. It's a pretty dope community. I've never understood that uh, thing of uh, you're not allowed to post in a certain language because certain people can't understand it. Though I suppose if it's constantly uh, spammed or there's a migration, there could be some sort of irritabilities regarding that. Throttle power. I left an interesting comment a while ago on my model collect spider tank that the fact that he was working on one as well. Very difficult project. So I had a look at his channel and uh, he's got low subscriptions, decent views, but he's got some great content. So I thought I'd give it a chance to give him a shout out and have a look at what he's doing. He touches a bit of Gundam, a bit of military, a bit of science fiction, a lot of cars, some interesting stuff. If you're looking for a new, near undiscovered channel to explore and consume, uh, this gentleman is for you. It's uh, really worthwhile to check him out and uh, watch him grow. Now, also, a couple of months ago, someone out of nowhere reminded me of the old days of YouTube. Just uh, cold messaged me out of nowhere saying, please have a look at my uh, channel or page or whatever. Subscribe and uh, follow me. Have a look at my art. Have a look at my Gundam. And uh, that's how we used to build up our audience uh, back in the day. And because people just don't do that anymore, that they'll friend you and then they'll send you a sneaky please like my page. You just send a straight DM. Hey, I've got art. Have a look at it. Follow me. Uh, the front forwardness of that uh, got my attention to have a look at him. And uh, his stuff was pretty good, but unfortunately his page has gone down. So if you're watching that, please get in touch. Tell me where your current page is and I would love to give you a shout out. The next uh, shout out I would like to give, which is a usual and a long time subscriber to my channel, K Scale Models, who's making his own line of aftermarket models, models, and a whole online hobby shop in the UK, selling tools, selling kits, and also offering 3D printing uh, commissions, advice, and all that sort of stuff. Sort of like a sister store to uh, the salt mines. He has uh, gifted me this STL file of a plastic uh, cement bowl uh, holder to prevent them tipping over and spilling with the uh, Salt Mines logo on it. Thank you very much. Instead of uh, using it as a product, I'm going to make uh, the file available as a sample, as well as to give to people who actually uh, come to uh, the shop. So if you would like an unbranded version or something, different sort of uh, twist on it. His hobby store is uh, selling those sort of tools and consumables. But also have a look at his uh, Facebook page for all the wonderful uh, designs and mock-ups and World War II uh, projects he's working on. He's got some great kits. He's got them on uh, all sorts of uh, platforms. Definitely an adventure to improve as it looks like this is the future of the hobby of uh, many, many small independent uh, makers and uh, molders opposed to a few big injection molders from uh, Asia and the uh, US. Uh, one of the last shout outs is to Nathan on Twitter. Now he does uh, multiple uh, works in uh, art, Nerf gun modifying, Gunpla, all that sort of thing, but he made contact with me finding the old Magellan uh, battleship and wishing to 3D print it in a different scale and display it in a hobby shop in the uh, United States. Of course, I've uh, given him full uh, go ahead to do so, but I wish to give him a shout out as this is the first uh, reconstruction of uh, the same project uh, since my original build, which is right behind me on uh, display. You can have a look at the salt mines. His uh, Twitter is very interesting to uh, look at and uh, follow if you're into that sort of stuff. There is some interesting adult content, so just uh, be aware uh, of that for anyone who's uh, young or sensitive. Uh, lastly, COVID has affected all of us, and the biggest thing to the modeling community besides small meetups is all the big events uh, have been cancelled. Uh, one of the last standing ones was uh, Anamunga uh, promising to go ahead in uh, November. 
As mentioned that Victoria is under very strict uh, lockdown conditions, uh, that has been cancelled and uh, rolled over to 2021. No events will be uh, happening during the course of uh, this year. A future vlog will occur where we'll discuss what will be opening up, what won't be and uh, where I'll be attending with the uh, hobby shop or not. But uh, I've had a talk to uh, their committee and executives and they're still interested in retaining the workshop to uh, do a uh, Gundam modelling, scale modelling uh, venture at their next event. Uh, lastly, I'd show a bit of a screenshot of uh, the progress of the salt mines in the workshop. At the start, middle of uh, this year, it was just a simple duplex parking garage. And uh, we've really worked up to where the state is right now, which shall be finished at uh, some state. In the way of uh, blogging, making videos, all that, in my time in uh, lockdown, there has been experimentation with uh, cooking barbecuing, as well as uh, many who have been uh, following me closely on the other YouTube channel, uh, picking up a, a new mascot and member of the family, uh, Katusha the Chicken. Uh, I do want to outline and thank all my close friends and people in the community who's been sticking their head in, and thank you for the support in uh, the journey of uh, building all of this up in the uh, garage and uh, starting a hobby shop for um, absolute scratch as well as all the locals who are interested in coming to uh, visit and uh, shop here. It definitely uh, warms my heart. Thank you very much for uh, all that. It's very reassuring that there will be some form of uh, success once the uh, lockdown procedures uh, have been uh, li lifted and I'll be very excited to share this uh, space with you. Thank you for uh, watching this long-winded uh, part vlog, part question and answer session. Uh, the algorithm has made it weird where it's uh, kind of hard to interact with the community in uh, this set with uh, such a small uh, channel. But uh, instead of doing it monthly like the old days, we'll just do it progressively from time to time when enough questions and interesting content is built up to talk about it and then fielding questions. But if you ever require assistance or have a question, uh, ask any time on any of the following platforms, links down below, and I'll eventually uh, get back to you as uh, soon as possible. And definitely stay tuned to this channel for when regular content will resume as shortly as possible. Uh, of course, there's the usual uh, hate and shit shots. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content, and we'll catch you guys later. Uh, have a look at and follow all the uh, usual social medias. Uh, there is content posted there in progress and behind the scenes that do not go on the channel. And some of that stuff will not appear in video form for probably months uh, to come. And uh, that wraps it up. Catch you later.